All right, if x and y are both random variables, um, in this video I'm going to show that their expected value of their sum is equal to the sum of their expected values. Okay, so to do this, um, first I always like to remind um, everyone by definition what is expected value. Um, if x is discrete, uh, it is the sum over x of x times the um, probability mass function of x. Um, by definition, this is what expected value is. Or if x is just um, continuous, then we would integrate over all possible x values, and we would have x times the um, probability density function of x. We'd be integrating over x. So uh, depending on if x is discrete or continuous, it's like this, right? By definition, this is what expected value is. So now I'm in, um, I, I have x plus y. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in x plus y instead of having just x. All right. So I um, suppose x, is, x and y are both discrete right for, for right now. Okay, let's assume that they're both discrete. Then um, I would be summing over x and I would be summing over y. And then I would have x plus y. And instead of having, so here's, I plugged in x plus y for x basically. And then instead of having the probability mass function of just x, I would need the probability mass function of x and y. So this is basically a joint probability mass function. Okay. So um, from here, I can simplify this a little bit. And um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and write my sum. And then I'm going to write, I'm basically going to distribute this uh, probability mass function. So I'll have x times the probability mass function xy, and then I'm going to have plus y times the probability mass function of xy, okay? Um, and then since I'm summing basically this sum, I can bring my sum into each piece. So I'm going to sum over x, sum over y of x, uh, probability x y and then I'm gonna have plus and I have my I'm gonna write my sum again of x and y um, y times the joint the joint probability mass function okay and then so let me scroll down um, now I, I have this x um, written here which does not depend on the y so it basically can be pulled out from that part of the sum and then I have the sum over y, my probability mass function of x and y. Okay. And then um, over here, um, I can re re uh, rearrange my sum from x. Instead of summing from x first and y first, I could sum from, um, or x first and y second. I could do y first and y x second, and I would get the same sum. So I can basically rearrange this. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to sum over y first, um, and then sum over x. And then since this uh, y does not depend on x, I can basically pull it out. OK, so I'm basically doing the same thing I did over here, just in reverse order. OK, and then um, once I'm here, I notice that this piece, I'm basically summing over my probability mass function over one of the variables, which then I have basically a joint distribution function now becoming a marginal distribution function. Okay, so um, the the probability function of x. Um, actually, let me write this in a different color. So this is a definition of a marginal distribution function. Um, the probability distribution of x. I could obtain this by summing over y from my joint distribution function. Okay. Um, similarly, the probability function of, of y, I would get this by summing over x for the joint distribution function. So these are probability or um, properties of um, marginal distribution functions. Okay, this is how you get it. So this equals the sum over x um, times when I have summed over y. So this would be the probability mass function of x. Okay. And then I have my sum over y times y times, and then this piece here, I've summed over x, which leaves me with the probability mass function of um, 
y, okay, my marginal distribution of y, okay? And then from here, I notice, okay, so this is what expected value of x is, right? That's what expected value of x is. Okay, and then this is what the expected value of y is. Okay, so now we've shown that the expected value of x plus y equals the expected value of x plus the expected value of y. Okay, now you can show this exactly the same way using integrals. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. I want to show it um, using integrals. So if x and y are both continuous, I would, I would be integrating over both x and y of x plus y times my joint distribution function. And then I would have dy dx. Just make sure you're, um, you're matching your integral, right? So we, we integrate over y and then we integrate over x, okay? It could have been dx, d, um, you could have gone uh, integrate over y and then integrate over x. The order here does not matter. Um, so then from here, very similar um, process, we would um, distribute our probability mass function. Um, we'd have y, or probability density function, excuse me, and then dy dx, okay? And then, um, and then I can, uh, break up this integral, right? Because I there's a property for integration um, where basically I can, I, if I have a sum, then I can integrate each piece of the sum. dy dx, and then I have plus the integral over x and y dy dx. So you see I basically have integrated each piece of the sum, okay? And then, um, uh, once again, thinking about our marginal distribution properties, so like um, the marginal distribution of x could be obtained by integrating over y of the joint distribution function, right? Um, the marginal distribution of y would be obtained by integrating over x the joint distribution function. Okay, so then use that property, let's use that. Um, let's pull out the x since it's not part of the integration of y. dy dx, okay? And so then I see this piece right here is exactly what the marginal distribution of y, of x is, okay? And then same thing over here, except I also need to reorder my integration. So I'm gonna integrate over y, uh, pull out the y, integrate over x, okay? And then since I changed that, I also need to change this to dx dy. And then this piece here is the marginal distribution of y, because I've integrated over x, okay? So then I write this out. This is f of x, x dx, and this is um, f of y, dy. Okay, so this is the expected value of x, and this is the expected value of y. So once again, we've shown that the expected value of the sum is equal to the sum of the expected values.